You've the just court. witnessed one of the biggest moments in our country's constitutional democracy. A former president, Jacob Zuma, who's 79 years old, has been sentenced to direct imprisonment of 15 months for contempt of court. He has five days to present himself to a police station at Inkandla or in Johannesburg to be sent to a correctional facility. He will appear in court on his fraud and corruption trial on the, 15, the 19th of July. He has also been ordered to pay the costs of two counsel. If he does not present himself to a police station in five days' time, the Minister of Police has been ordered to do whatever is necessary to make sure that he does. In one of the strongest worded statements that the constitutional court in this country has ever delivered, it sought to upheld itself as the guardians of the Constitution and said that Jacob Zuma's behavior, to choose some words, has been contemptuous, outlandish, scandalous, egregious, vexatious, and smacking of malice. Strong words there, asserting its power as custodians of the Constitution, it was a judgment of 7-2 to the majority. We now go to Jacob Zuma's spokesperson, Mzwaneli Mani, who's standing by for us. Mr. Mani, your reaction, please. Good afternoon, uh, uh, and good afternoon to all your listeners. Today is a sad day uh, that has just, uh, we've just listened to this uh, judgment. Uh, it's sad because, firstly, I think as the foundation, we note that the judgment was not unanimous. Uh, and it's very fundamental when a judgment is not unanimous. Uh, as the foundation, we've just listened and heard a very cogent argument uh, from the minority judgment. And uh, we've also heard that uh, the minor minority judgment is saying this ruling is actually unconstitutional. Uh, and this is said by people that are not politicians. So if, a ju if judges say this judgment is unconstitutional, uh, it, it creates a, 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 a crisis, actually, uh, uh, in terms of implementation of this uh, uh, unconstitutional uh, uh, judgment as, as, as pronounced by other judges. This is not the foundation saying this. If we've got uh, competent judges, sober judges, that are saying this judgment is unconstitutional. How do you expect us as a foundation to say to the, our patron that uh, he must uh, accept the rule of law if the people that are entrusted with the rule of law uh, are saying this judgment is unconstitutional? So indeed, we will study the judgment. Our lawyers will study this judgment and uh, a much more, uh, much more uh, comprehensive statement will be issued in due course. But as things stand right now, uh, we, we are very persuaded by what uh, Justice Chapter and, uh, and, uh, and Justice Theron have, have, have said. Uh, we think what they have said, what they've said, they've said what they've said, and they've quoted the Constitution, they've quoted uh, the, the circumstances, and instead, in, in response, the majority judgment seems to be uh, based on the Riding on the on the on, on on the issue of their opinion, so to speak, when the other judges are arguing a matter of law, that in terms of the law, this is how it should be dealt with. But the other judges, they seem so heartful with President Zuma, they just not going to have none of, none of none of his nonsense, and they're going to just uh, go ahead and use their majority to make a particular ruling. We think uh, we think uh, we think uh, the the majority the the, the the minority judges actually are being the lawful officers in this case that are not emotional. Uh, as it, uh, we reading from the judgment, it would appear that uh, the majority judges are quite emotional on this, on this issue uh, and so on. So, so we started the judgment, they will issue a full statement. Mr. Manyi, where is uh, the former president and is he going to, at the age of 79, argue that he is not in good enough health to be uh, sent to jail? 
Yeah, well, firstly, to be saying where President Zuma is, is a security issue. Uh, I'm not at liberty to disclose his exact thought about, uh, as it were. Uh, that's the first thing. And uh, as to how his attitude is going to be uh, out of this is a matter that uh, will be will be uh, shared in due course. At this point, uh, I'm sure he is very shocked uh, to see that uh, uh, we have officers of the court that are saying the judgment is unconstitutional, uh, but that judgment goes ahead despite uh, advice by judges that uh, this is a travesty of justice. So, indeed, he must be shocked where he is that uh, for all these years that he's been fighting for justice in this country, uh, for all these years that he's been fighting for constitutional democracy, but we've got constitutional democracy that is uh, implemented in a manner that is dependent on opinions of judges as opposed to the law. And these are the words, basically, of the other judges, as it were. So anybody sitting and watching this is saying, wow, uh, what is going on in South Africa? Why is it that we have judges that are saying, hello, colleagues, this is unconstitutional, but the other colleagues are not phased? They're just hurtful. They just want to do this. It's a gut of the consequences. So it's a sad day in South Africa. Mr. Mani, uh, uh, Justice Kampepe was very clear that this uh, punitive sentence is very much about sending a strong message that nobody is above the law. The MK vets outside in Kandla have said uh, for the past four months that they will not allow anybody to take the former president from his residence. Do you see any kind of unrest or problems uh, occurring at uh, the residence uh, or wherever the president is currently situated? No, I think that comment is inviting something that would uh, later be interpreted as uh, me inciting violence, uh, as it were. So I'm not going to respond to that uh, comment. Uh, but uh, we'll just see what's going to happen in the country. But I think I must say that, uh, you see, that kind of a thing is what uh, uh, Justice Campempe also said in his judgment, in her judgment. She said uh, that uh, as the court, they've got to be impervious uh, to these things. So let's see uh, what uh, that is the full expression of uh, being impervious means, uh, as it were. Uh, but uh, uh, ICTA, uh, and I'm saying as the foundation, we think it's a set day today. We think it's a set day largely because judges are saying the judgment is unconstitutional. If we had a, a, a unanimous judgment today, I'm almost sure the foundation will be issuing a statement to say uh, justice has prevailed and therefore President Zuma must subject himself to processes uh, and all of that. But if you have judges that are saying this judgment is unconstitutional, what do you expect should be the attitude of President Zuma when judges themselves are saying, of the highest court in the land, are saying the judgment is unconstitutional? That's what we're sitting with now. I think we're sitting with a dilemma in this country of a judgment that must be implemented, but judges are saying that judgment is unconstitutional. I think we have a crisis. Mr. Manyi, a 7-2 dissent is pretty common. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, it's, it's noted most of the time. Um, when you say there's a crisis, what do you mean by that? And let me remind you, please, that Mr. Zuma himself told the Constitutional Court that he was willing to go to jail rather than testify. I think we have a crisis when we have the people that are entrusted with uh, protecting and defending South Africa's constitution, people that are, are entrusted with defending the rights of individuals as enshrined in the constitution. Now, if those people are saying this kind of, if those people are saying what should be happening now is uh, we should have a judgment that is coercive, uh, as it were, uh, so that a person must actually uh, hang himself, if you like, uh, 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 as it were. Now, if, that's, if they are saying this is what should have happened, and they are saying to have a situation that you have now that is not even appealable, uh, as it were, why do you do this? 
why do you, when you like, treat a, a case as if it's a civil case? When you like, you treat the case as a criminal case. When you like, you take away the rights that are, 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 are true in a criminal case. And you say, you've, therefore, this right does not apply to you, this does not apply to you. But when you like, you impose a sentence and you treat a person as a criminal. Uh, and yet, all the rights that accrue to an accused, as in a criminal case, you've taken those away. What kind of inconsistency is this? This is really a crisis. How can you have judges that are cherry-picking which side of the pie is sweeter? This is what you have. Mr. Mani, it's very shocking. Mr. Mani, before I let you go, I'm sure that your phone's WhatsApp uh, yeah. is going mad. Uh, yeah. Are you getting any reaction from uh, Mr. Zuma's family or close associates? And if so, uh, can you share those with us? I think if, even if they wanted to phone, they wouldn't have had the chance to come through. I'm inundated with media. I've got to run now uh, and talk to other people. You've had the first cherry on the bite. Thank you, uh, sir. Yeah. Okay. So I've got to run. Uh, that is our position. We will issue a full statement in due course after we've spoken uh, with the lawyers. Jacob Zuma's spokesperson name is Wenele Mani speaking to us, saying he is shocked there is a constitutional crisis with the imprisonment, the direct imprisonment of Jacob Zuma uh, of 15 months to jail for contempt of court. We have so much.